Hey everybody, this game is uh, a classic game <clears throat> from 1996 from Peter's Fiddler with the White Peters versus Grandmaster or the late Grandmaster Alembit uh, O. Um, actually, if somebody can do me a favor, the, the, the last name is spelled O L L. Lembit O. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but the late Grandmaster, I remember he had uh, committed suicide some years ago. I think he was down on his luck after a, a chess tournament, if I remember correctly. But it's Peter's Fiddler with the White Peaches versus Lembit O. This game started out E4, D5, Scandinavian, right? Your favorite opening. E takes and Queen takes, of course, Knight. Um, Knight of Six is also possible. Um, no one Grandmaster that plays this uh, uh, expert in this variation is Sergei uh, Tivyakov. Um, the main knock on this for the longest has always been that White uh, gains time against the the Knight or the Knight or the Queen, regardless of the capture. The Knight captures White usually winds up put placing. The D and C pawns in the center. Um, just like in Alakon's defense. It's not bad per se. But White just gets a comfortable position. Where he can kind of slowly squeeze um, black in many of these uh, lines. And um, you know just gaining time early has always been um, a turn off to uh, many top players to this variation. Just bring the queen out early and getting smacked around by the knight. So Sviddler plays knight C3. Queen goes to a5. Of course, there's other places the queen can go. d6 is one line. Famous game is um, Karpov, uh, Anatoly Karpov versus Anatoly Lutikov in this line. Another more insipid line is queen d8. But queen a5 is what you see most. d4 by Fiddler. Natural moves. Knight f6. Knight f3. And now c6, this move provides a retreat for the uh, queen. It also stops moves like knight b5 from happening. Bishop c4. Bishop f5. And now you'll see why the queen often needs a uh, retreat. It's bishop d2. And now you have this opposition here. The bishop, lower value piece versus the high value piece. And now the queen can get out of dodge. If the pawn is on c7, the queen risks getting getting in trouble over here. e6 and now knight e4 with the oops with this discovered attack on the queen. Now the queen can go back to d8. So queen d8 and knight g3. Not trading pieces but continuing the attack. Gaining more time. And now notice, and that's an instructive moment right there. Because, again, the opponent is a little bit cramped in this Carol Slav structure. Right? He's very solid, but White has more space. Right? So you don't want to relieve the opponent. You know? Um, if you have less space, you want to trade off pieces. Because, you know, it gives you a little more elbow room. Notice how Fiddler played the move, but then he just played Knight G3. Right? Because if you're going to trade, you want to get some type of concession. Whether it's these beat up pawns like this after knight takes bishop, you're willing to go for that. But just a, side, just a regular knight takes bishop, you know, followed by queen takes and, you know, just relieving the opponent. You don't want to do that. Alright. Knight g3. Bishop g6 and now h4. Okay, similar to Carol Khan, right? We're gonna do the same stuff. Queen E2, castles on the queen side. It's a good thing to keep in mind. So before H5 can be played, normally in the Carol Khan, H6 would be on on the table. Knight H5 is played. There it is, Queen E2. Knight D7, castle. Now is White winning? Of course not. But is White better? Yes, he is. He has more space. There's more attacking chances. Black is kind of forced to be careful and hold, right? You know, hopefully, you know, be solid. Trade off judiciously. 
and then try to hope White makes some mistakes in the end game. Bishop d6, knight e5, knight takes g3, there's some trades, f takes g3, but now you have this f file open, more trades, and now h5. Again, White's pawn structure is a little bit damaged, but he has a great position, he has excellent space, he has two bishops. Right, he's ahead in development and he has open files by which to conduct his attack. It's pretty much, um, you know, it's, it's not really safe for black on the king side. d6 looks like an excellent square for a bishop or a rook. Alright, so I have to say this opening worked out pretty good for um, Svidler. Of course, he goes right for there with bishop b4. Queen to b6. And now he plays this move, queen e1. Now, this move is really natural and could have been played. Don't think it couldn't have been played. But Sviller decides to play the move, queen e1. Queen e1, um, of course, prevents uh, queen side castling on account of bishop um, d6. Whereas the immediate bishop d6, you know, back here, he can still castle. Alright, so anyway, queen e1. So right now the bishop keeps him from castling over there and keeps him from castling over there. So it's kind of like a little bit of wait, waiting move. Bishop f5. Rook f1, g6, queen to c3, and now knight c5. Now you have this rook f4. Alright, planning to come over here. And now knight e4, queen e1. Rook h7, bishop a5, queen to c5, and now bishop just comes back to d3. And knight takes d3, and of course this is a blunder. The idea behind knight takes d3 is that, you know, queen may be overworked. So, if queen takes g3, queen takes a5 with tempo here. All right, and black is, uh, you know, almost, uh, you know, equalized. However, after knight takes the g3, Fiddler just played bishop b4, attacking the queen. And there's nowhere the queen can go to maintain the attack um, any longer. Because now, on b4, the rook is protecting the bishop. So, for example... If queen b6, and queen takes g3, and there's no attack, the rook is here. So, that was it. And then Lemon O resigned. So, anyway, so brief, brief highlights in that, on that. It's not, you know, um, brief, you know, thoughts on the game. This opening variation in general is uh, the Scandinavian bad? Of course not. You know what I mean? It'd be naive to say it was it was bad, you know, especially at club level. I mean, but even some grandmasters play it, you know? Um, but again, just beware if you are trying to play this as black, beware to be ready to get in those kind of, you know, cramped positions where you'll be, you know, similar to the Carol Khan, where you'll be just kind of, um, you know, kind of, Facing facing the heat from your opponent for a long time, you know, if you don't mind giving your opponent this kind of space Here and you just want to kind of try to be cramped and trade off pieces and waiting and stuff like that You know then uh, so be it But if you're not that type of player don't enter into this because you do lose time notice the Queen moved several times the Queen came and captured the pawn and then on d5 then it moved to a5 then moved back to um, d8 so that's three tempi, and this is why you see 
um, black um, so far behind development and space. But some players like this, you know, this stuff. All right. But here, I prefer white. 